Hey guys, I'm back from holiday break, and I seriously cannot wait for 2017 and all the new games it's going to bring. But first, let's review all the gaming goodness from this year before it ends. These are the top 10 best games of 2016. Number 10. Oh shit! It's working! Woo yeah, Punch boy! It. How do I uh, get into my cockpit view? Fuck! Oh, shit. And you're dead. And I'm dead. 2016 was a pretty meh year for Xbox One exclusives. Some of them were canceled, quite a few pushed into 2017. However, two games managed to make their mark. Gears of War 4 and this title, Forza Horizon 3. I've always loved the genre, the allure of these beautiful, expensive, real life, single purpose machines. The symphony of their engines nearing redline, the sense of dangerous but addictive speed. Oh shit, what the fuck? Oh shit! <laughs> Everything's falling in front of me! I'm breaking Joe, everything! Joe, do you not know your own f***ing strength? What the fuck? Do you think this is a real car? Do you think this is a real car? You grab up on the wheel like Hulk? I'm sorry. What the fuck with these muscles, I'm sorry. man? How did you even I do that? I broke it! I'm breaking everything! Rewind! And with the latest Forza, you get the best of all of these. An absolutely beautiful open world that recreates Australia's landscapes with stunning visual fidelity. This racer has the capability to appeal to all types of racing fans, and even possibly outsiders. I managed to catch up with him, but unfortunately... <laughs> the level of polish and quality in this one really surprised me. The only blemish is maybe how I had to play mostly with my controller at my newly purchased steering wheel, the G29, which is in the list of supported wheels, didn't work quite as advertised. We're gonna do this shit right the now. Dragon. That was a funny one. Turn left. Oh shit, you see? What did I tell you? Fuck this goddamn <laughs> wheel! You barely even touched it, I is told it you! Is it because the fucking... You get... <laughs> fuck! <laughs> I fucking told you, I barely even touched it! Number 9 Gameplay team, amazing. Graphics team, amazing. Car mechanic team. Fucked it up! They done fucked it up! The Chocobo team, amazing. Music team, lazy as fuck. Those are some lazy assholes over there. Is this game playing itself? Am I seriously, am I about to run out of gas too? We've run the tank dry. <sighs> uh. Fuck! Final Fantasy 15. I waited a very long time for this one. I've not really played any Final Fantasy outside of 13 for any length of time. And I just wanted to know what I was missing out on. And I hear that's not a good representation. So I considered this game to be the best candidate for me to jump on board with. And while I believe it does deserve a spot on my list due to some extremely good parts like it's a fun, action-oriented gameplay, the amazing animations it has, the insane attention to detail, its impressively scaled and creative looking boss designs. Summon! Oh, thank God! Ruma, fuck him up, dude! I'm so fucking pissed at this piece of shit bird! Fucking kill him! Do it! Oh God, I love you. I love you and your beard! Ah. Yeah, fuck 
your shit. All right. And really, it's never ending buckets of charm. But I just couldn't bring myself to put it any higher, and it almost missed the list with all the missteps and glaring faults, the unfulfilling, poorly done side quests, the serious lack of emotion during critical moments in the storyline, the plot, or lack thereof, in the game itself. Like, you, you don't know what's going on. You're like, is this a part of my current story? I have no idea. I don't if know. If I didn't I watch this, yeah, the movie. you haven't seen the I movie. Have you have movie. no idea what's going on right no, now, No, I you? don't. All right. That god awful stock music. Uh, this, this, the, the fucking music is killing me, man. It's killing me. What happened to the music in this game? This is the kind of shit that I could buy for a cent. And the absolutely annoying goddamn car mechanics where you stare at a screen doing nothing. And, and it just, the number of odd choices in this game pissed me off. What? Get you. Get the f out the fucking car! Get the ass out! This is probably the most uneven and flawed game that's ever made a top best list, in my opinion. I absolutely hate it. But I really love it, too. And I know that's odd. And in the end, though, I just can't deny that it's still one of the better, most memorable experiences I had all year, the bad and the good included. Its charm ended up winning me overall in the end, despite its flaws. Wow, that was intense. That boss battle was intense. That was good stuff. I was like, ah, oh, that's, that's good stuff. That feels good. Oh, yeah. Threw everything I had into it. We came away victorious. And yes, your shirts do get dirty. There's proof there. That's pretty cool. Number eight. We are justice. We are compassion. We are determination. We are Overwatch. Blizzard took a gamble, really, by jumping into this FPS genre, the arena hero shooter, in a time when there was many. But it was one that ultimately paid off, perhaps better than expected for what it is. Get there, get there, get there. Come on, guys, get there, get there. Hold on, I'll shield you. Oh my god, they're all here. Oh, fucking die. Stay behind me. Oh shit, I'm dead. Revive, revive. Oh my god, hell yes, mercy. Okay, fuck. Holy shit, there's so many of them. Hold. Hold them on, fucking die. Yes. Oh shit, we got it! We got it! Hell yes! Good job, everyone! Yay! Oh my god, that was so fun. With its bright visuals, hyper stylized, interesting characters, pitch perfect team based gameplay. Overwatch took the shooter community by storm. It's consistently in the top of Twitch lists. And while I don't think that it deserves a lot of the number one spots it's getting on many top lists due to the lack of content and the, the price for value ratio at release, it certainly has continued to prove its lasting power. There was no doubting the amount of fun and countless hours one could sink into this hero-based arena shooter with stunning tactical depth, its simplicity was really quite deceptive as there's a great amount of variety and joy in learning the ins and outs of each character before mastering your favorites. All this supported by continuous updates, a positive and overall good community aside for some, and its fast, intense, bite-sized matches that all work together to keep you playing well past the point that some other similar games might have gotten old. Overwatch just keeps on ticking and getting better, and hopefully they add a whole lot more. 
number seven. <laughs> oh, oh shit, it's Master Chief! No! That's Doom Guy! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Bethesda managed to bring such a revered classic first-person shooter into the modern era with such a high-octane, heavy metal, adrenaline-filled gore fest. I just had to put it on the list. Its symphony of destruction was oh so satisfying. Sure, the story was overly simplistic and the multiplayer was average at best, but the solid single-player campaign combined with the fantastic fantastic moment-to-moment -moment gameplay made up for all that in stride. And while I never really used the map editor, and I found many of the user-created maps underwhelming at best, and at least initially, I still appreciated that the developers cared enough to give us all of these features. But above all else, it's just how this game felt to play. How did these demons learn how to do this? Oh, it's an invasion for- oh! That was fucking bad. The movement, the destruction, and the sound all combining in a very perfectly devilish way. All the wonderful side strafing, sprinting under fire, fast movement, the well-timed kill shots that are new combined for one hell of a return for Doom. And I'd easily recommend it to anyone who loves to blow shit up and kick demon ass. <laughs> Number six. You were not invited to Kane's party. And that's why you're dead. <laughs> well, well. Another runaway hero. With an SRS Vanguard class Titan. Woo! Now we're talking! <laughs> Bring a knife to a knife fight. Let's get this party started, scrub. Titanfall 2. I was a bit pissed off with how EA failed to properly market this game and give it the attention it deserved, putting it smack dab in the worst place of the year, tightly between two juggernauts, Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty. And because of that, I think commercially it may have underperformed, but that was certainly no fault of the developers. I was also pleased at how despite EA's blunder, Respawn lovingly crafted and improved their sequel, pretty much directly listening to fan and reviewer feedback and gave us much of what was missing from the first game. This iteration brought with it the highly requested single player campaign mode. A positive attitude can only improve our situation. Militia Titan spotted, chassis number BT7274. Thank you, fire. Not bad, Wiley. Not bad. Bloody Vanguard class Titans. Enemy Titan down. Well done, pilot. Our combat effectiveness rating has increased. One that not only brought additional value to the package where it had not been before, but one that a campaign that just surpassed my expectations and really opened my eyes to the potential of the universe here that I had not even considered. 
The personal relationships between pilots and these badass mechs was a joy to explore and partake in. And just as always, the seamless transition between flawless on foot parkour and full-fledged mech on mech combat was fantastic. New customization options, boosted multiplayer with a few missteps here and there, but overall the game had that just one more match feeling of the original. Now, if they could only get the progression and those depth of unlocks correct for a third game, we have potentially game of the year contender hands down, and I'm looking forward to it. Number five. I only got one turn Holy left shit, to click that fucking button. Are you, are you liars? We got 5,900 views. Fuck. No! Run, no! I made the wrong thing, Joe! I'm fucking fucked! What the fuck happened? Ah! Oh my god! This is your leader! This is who you, you decided to put your... Oh my god. Stop following this guy. Look at it. XCOM 2. A follow-up to one of the best games of 2012, this sequel, four years later, continues the franchise by having us ultimately lose the war we fought all those years ago. Enslaved humanity is now subservient to the alien invaders, but not everyone takes this lying down. And that's where my squad of elite angry army soldiers takes over, fighting the good fight and resisting our oppressors. Humanity's only hope! Fire! God yes, Titan. damn it, Titan! God damn it, Magic Man! God damn it, Ataku! I got this! God! Damn it, Angry wide Joe! Left. Wide left. What, what the thinking? fuck is going on? And okay, so a few save scums later, humanity's only hope will be victorious! That fucking tower now. We need <laughs> Marines. We are leaving. That is for you, Titan. I loved XCOM's 2's innovation and having the organization be an insurgency fighting against all odds. It made for a great, compelling campaign storyline that had a much better, gratifying ending than the first. Improvements to the game came across the board, including individual customization options for those great dynamic story moments when your soldiers would brush death and pull off some amazing feats that you just wanted to share those stories with anyone that would listen. Where are you going? No, 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 no! No, don't kill Joe! Don't kill Joe! Don't kill Joe! I'm gonna run! I didn't see it! 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 Get out of my head! I didn't see it! Tense, tactical, and insanely fun, I'd recommend the game to any lover of sci-fi or strategy games. Hell, it's even worth looking into, into possibly converting you into a new fan of these types of games. Give it a shot if you haven't already. Trust me. Number four. God, they will nuke your face! My attempts to avoid violence have failed. And I, for an hour, only makes the world blind.
Okay, guys, seriously, the Gandhi jokes are getting old. He's really not that aggressive. The reputation came from a bug in one of the originals, all right? I know it's fun to romanticize that this pacifist is some horrible military dictator, but let's just get a little more original now, okay, please? There are so many other amazing personalities in this game, all brought to life in a new visual style, and personally, I enjoy it. It grew on me. And outside of regrettably releasing with what I found to be some pretty inept and weak AI, Civilization VI was still, on the whole, an addictive empire-building achievement, an overall positive advancement for the franchise, even if I had to play it on the hardest difficulty. But as soon as that AI patch was released, along with some various other improvements, it's become the strategy heavyweight that it intended to be. Decentralizing the cities to create visually impressive and functional districts was a fantastic addition, as well as the new political system. You had more personalization options, more meaningful choices, and lots of different potential victory conditions. City-states and great people are handled far better, and I found myself losing countless hours just role-playing in the game with its beautiful soundtrack based on your civilization. That one more turn addiction is there. The epic scale of war between nations just pushing me on through all hours of the night. Basically, it's as if all of the expansions from Civ 5 had been included in the base Civ 6 and then they ramped it up to 11. A complex yet approachable game that's still engaging hundreds of hours into its gameplay. How can any fan of history, strategy, or empire building pass this one up? One of the best 4X games gets even better and any future expansions have more than earned my money. We rise to the challenge and become something greater than ourselves. A civilization. Number three. For the first time, the Total War series is giving you a fantasy world to conquer. Four races are at war. Who will you lead? Epic fantasy battle on a scale you've never experienced. Choose your side and... Conquer this world. Total War Warhammer. Probably the one game I most regret not getting to review fully this year is Total War Warhammer. I apologize for that because Creative Assembly deserved the praise and congratulations it earned by putting out one, if not the most exciting, innovative, fresh, and fun Total War games ever made. Buy this game, please. I mean, right now, if you haven't. It was as if the Warhammer license was made specifically to be adapted into this franchise one day. Huge armies, all with their own unique playstyle, strengths, and weaknesses, engage in glorious epic battle that you can't help but get lost in watching the individual carnage play out. There was so much fun that you just sometimes forget to better command your forces, you're enjoying it just too much. The Total War formula has new life breathed into it. Hands down the best strategy game of 2016 and one that keeps getting better with new content and new factions through DLC. And when the main game is this strong and satisfying, I have no problem supporting the game by buying this additional content, especially if it leads to more of what we have here. 
a better game than Rome and Attila, hell even perhaps Shogun, this is now my favorite Total War as the variety of units, the depth of the lore, the reworked and improved AI, and all the tactical and strategic decisions demanded of you here bring this tabletop war game to life in ways even the real physical game could never hope to achieve. It's a masterpiece. And if they ever decided to improve the end game and add some more like individual dynamic branching RPG like quests, that would possibly be one of the dream games of my life and will have easily earned a legendary 10 out of 10. I won't be missing any more of these reviews in this franchise because supposedly there's more to come, that's for sure. And I can't wait to see what they do next. Get this game if you haven't already. There have been sacrifices. Number two. Go you don't back. know that. I bought that World War you One gun that. for this goddamn review, and you're gonna fucking but use this it. It's fucking sweet. It doesn't matter. What's up? That everybody else is you. Go back. <laughs> Go back. That's more like it, Joe. You ready? Ready? Go! Yeah! I fucking love this thing! Whatever, Joe, let's go! Joe! Battlefield 1. Where most other big time military shooters are busy giving us laser and jet packs year after year, DICE has decided to take a bit of a risk by setting their flagpole franchise in World War One. Uh, it's coming down on top of us though. Oh god, run! Oh, that's so fucking cool, tunnel. holy oh, shit! Get out of there, go! Oh, Fish! God <laughs> damn! Holy shit! Anybody you guys oh. died? Everybody dead? You guys, are you alive? I'm alive. Speak to me. You're good. Hang on me. <coughs> Shit! Sniper! While the core gameplay is pretty much intact and the same, the new setting gives some fresh new life into this proven squad base full war experience. It does sometimes feel like there's a bit too many automatic weapons for the theme, but there's no denying the unique excitement and allure of the period. The old school fighter combat, the blimps, the zeppelins, the strange monster tanks, even fun as hell cavalry charges into battle. Oh shit, two snipers! Ah! Yeah! Yeah! Uh, yeah! Yeah! Battlefield 1 continues the tradition of extremely excellent visuals, sound design, multiple person vehicle gameplay as we've known over the years, only packed with some now new unique game modes. Operations in particular is a resounding success providing players with that true feeling of an ongoing massive scale conflict like never before. Captured the Our cries of victory will be wow. Next map. Dude, this is the fucking coolest shit. There's like all this extra shit. This is the most fun I've had in Battlefield since Bad Company 2. There's a second phase? Holy yes. fuck. If they won, then that, this would be over, but we pushed so we get to go to the next map. That's amazing. 
I love it. This feels like a fucking war. Dude, I, this is great. I'm so happy they chose this setting for this particular game, and it helps make it among the best games all year long. With upcoming updates, like new maps and armies and modes, this game is looking to keep players engaged. I only hope they put in more roleplay-like abilities with old school, like, server single shot trench warfare and, and plenty of that damn whistle. I'm really looking forward to what other setting DICE decides to go with here in the future. Every once in a while, we push hard enough that the light breaks through the clouds. It's in a world beyond the war glimmers. Just out of reach. Number one. Nathan Drake, that two-bit thief. Risking it all for some piece of treasure. I guess that's how they know me. How they'll remember me. But that's not who I am. Wow, what a fantastic game. For me, I had never gotten to play any of the previous Uncharted, but after playing this excellent adventure, I ran out, got the others. So sure, they all kind of smashed together in this number one slot for this year. I'm cheating, but Uncharted 4 in particular is masterfully produced. It's high budget. It's visually impressive action adventure platforming game. Granted, it's certainly not a flawless game. And actually, surprisingly, this year didn't see any 10 out of 10 ratings from the Angry Joe show, as in previous years. All these are 9 out of 10s, but Uncharted 4 definitely was among these top three on my list that came really close to the legendary rating. It had an interesting story with well-developed characters, expertly voice acted alongside some unforgettable locations. Combat was, for me, satisfying, and just like Tomb Raider before it, the adventuring elements just felt right. A huge, globe-trotting adventure filled with mystery, intrigue, puzzles, and some just very smartly written dialogue. Plus, there's even multiplayer to extend the game's life a bit. If you own a PS4, you are simply required to purchase this game, you'd be doing yourself a tremendous favor. If this truly is the final chapter in this series, it's one hell of a title to go out on, and it's one that I'd recommend to anyone. I'm so happy that I got to play it and some of its previous uh, games. If you own a PS4, you are simply required to purchase this game. You'd be doing yourself a tremendous favor, and all the previous games. If this truly is the final chapter in the series, it's one hell of a title to go out on, and it's one that I'd recommend to anyone. Well, that's it. That's my top list. If any of your favorites missed it, well, it's likely that I probably never got around to playing that particular one from start to finish all year long. So let me know which ones you think should have made it into the top 10 in the comments below. And stay tuned for the top 10 worst games of 2016 that should be fun we'll see you guys on the next angry joe show